Hey tubers, Farmall here. Um, I've been working on a little project for the last week or so and uh, it occurred to me that maybe you guys don't know the process for actually designing and building a, an electronic circuit. So basically I'm just going to run over that kind of quick. Um, I started out with some schematics online that I found. wasn't really happy with them. This is just some of my hand scratching here, different parts of the circuits that I was working on. And uh, this is my breadboard. Part of the circuit is, is on here. One of the steps is hooking it up and experimenting and figuring out if it works the way you want it to. And then you move on and you draw the schematic. I use some software that's available free online. Um, it's called Express Express Schematic. So you basically draw the schematic out, and this is really only for reference. And this is basically the schematic. And then you use another part of the program called uh, Express PCB Printed Circuit Board. And the idea is, is you use this software to make the printed circuit board layout where all the components go, which looks like this. And then you're supposed to send this off to them and they'll make you your circuit boards. <clears throat> but I use the software and then I make my own circuit boards. Then what we do from that step is we print it out exactly the way it will appear on the circuit board. And we check placement to make sure that all the pieces will fit in their respected places and make sure that the, the actual percentage ratio of the print is correct as it is supposed to be. Um, you get into trouble if you get anything a little bit bigger than the paper because it will shrink it down and then it's not the correct physical size. <clears throat> so once you get that done, move on to preparing the board, which I have already prepared here. You want to wash this with hot soapy water and a scotch brite pad, one of these commercial green or brown scratchy pads. You want to roughen that up and you want to clean off as much of the deposits, any kind of stains and anything that you can. You want that thing to just shine. If it's scratched, that's fine, but they're, they're, they're minute scratches. They won't hurt anything. And you want to wash it with dish soap as you're doing this to kind of lubricate it. A little, little soapy warm water and dish soap. And uh, kind of do it in a circular type pattern a little bit. And you want to rinse it off real good. And then I usually hit it with a little Windex or window cleaner, something with a little ammonia in it. And run the scratchy pad across it again underwater, rinse it off real good. And then you want to dry it. Once you've cleaned it, you do not want to touch the copper because any oil from your fingers will get on there and it'll affect it later on when we go to etch it. Then the next step will be printing the um, the graphics, the artwork here, out on a laser printer. The key is the laser printer. And uh, I'll prepare that and I'll show you guys what that's all about. Okay, I've printed off the circuit board layer. And you're probably wondering, well that's some funny looking paper. This is a secret. <clears throat> I don't know what this paper's made out of. I buy it from a guy online. I haven't bought any in years. And it's fairly expensive. It's like a dollar a sheet. It's basically an overhead film screen. One of the real thin mylar screens. And it's coated with some kind of blue stuff. But it's basically release paper. The blue is not really stuck to the mylar very good. And the secret being the laser printer is toner, or the ink that the laser printer uses, is actually melted plastic. So what you do is you print it on this paper where it sticks enough to print on and then you take this and you take your circuit board and you don't even have to reverse it which is nice because see normally this picture if you remember from the computer is actually looking down on top of the circuit board all the pieces are going to be sticking up on here and this is actually looking right straight through the circuit board well, you want this on the bottom of the board 
where you actually can't see it. So if you turn this over on the bottom of the board, now it's a mirror image and it won't work. The nice stuff about this process is you automatically reverse it when you put the circuit board. Now you're mirroring the circuit board face down and the picture is going to be the right way around when it's on here. So basically what you do is you cut, I'll cut this out. Um, it'll actually be a little bit smaller than the circuit board which is the way it's designed to work. Trim this out with scissors and then you tape it along one edge so that it can move a little bit if it has to. And then we're going to run it through um, a laminator. And I've turned the laminator up as high as it'll go. And you basically run it through the laminator half a dozen times, always putting the taped edge in first so that what you're going to do is you're going to melt, you're going to remelt the toner which is on here and it's going to stick to this nice clean circuit board. And when it's all done, this image will be face down on the back side of the circuit board. So that's basically it. You just uh, tape it on one edge, which will be the leading edge. Open up this here. It's a little difficult to do with one hand. So the board's all happy in there. Everything's laying down flat. We fold the edge over. And this is the edge that goes in first. The taped edge goes in first. And the heat is on both sides. But we'll run it through this way first and I usually run it through right side up and upside down and sometimes I'll angle a little bit but this is a pretty big board so it probably won't go through there at too much of an angle alright she's coming out here the last time um, I only ran it through about I think twice more we'll take this out turn the laminator off I got some cold water running in the sink you want to cool this down fairly evenly this should be stuck on there Hopefully it's come out well. You never know until, until you peel the paper off. And as you can see, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, that mylar is laid right on there nice. You can see the bumps, they're, they're slightly raised up where the ink is underneath. So now we basically want to put this in the cool water. So that it will cool it down. And you basically just try to get the edge of it with your fingernail. Ta-da! Just like so. Now that mylar has peeled away and left whatever that blue coating is and the toner on the circuit board. But I'll take my sharpie marker and touch all them up and then we'll get the etchant ready and I'll show you etching the circuit board. Anywhere where there's black plastic or toner or marker the copper will stay and anywhere where there is no toner the copper will get ate away. All that shiny copper is going to go away and it'll leave just a bunch, it'll just leave the black part left with copper soup anybody? This is uh, ferric chloride. It eats copper. I got most of the spots that I could see cleaned up on here and touched up with the marker. And I don't see any other ones. It won't be perfect because it's awful hard to do that. <clears throat> but basically what you do is you just put this right in the board. Board right down in there like that. Agitate it a little bit. Well, let's check our progress. It's taking a little longer than I remember, but it is working. You can see the copper's disappearing. It usually does that. It works from the outside in, and then all of a sudden it'll go real fast when it gets real thin. Well, let's check on it again. It's been another minute or so, a couple minutes. Yeah, it's just about there. 
a little bit along the bottom edge where the tape residue was. So look at that, it's disappearing right before your eyes. Almost done. I would say that's good. I'll. I'm gonna do, wash this off. Obviously, don't do this if you've got copper plumbing for your drains, because it'd be really bad. I'm going to try to clean this edge up where this is left, a little rubbing alcohol and get that tape residue off of there and then I'll probably stick that bottom edge back in the edge. Alright, I got the uh, board all etched. I got the edge there that was messed up from the tape residue cleaned all up. I, what I ended up doing, I put a big wide piece of packaging tape across there to cover up the traces and stuff that I didn't want to get. And then I just stuck it in there endways and it it etched off the edge. Now, basically it's soap and water and scrubbing. Get that toner off. Well here's the drill press that I built for this type of work. It's an old uh, Sears model that used to hold, you'd put your, your portable hand drill right in here and strap it in. Well, this is actually a, a, an old electric typewriter motor and a very small chuck. It's a quarter inch chuck. And I've added a couple things. I added these fans that actually blow the fiberglass out of the way. And this little light, so you can see what you're doing. It's actually pretty bright and it gets warm. That's another reason for the fans. And uh, just to give you an idea how small of stuff you're working on here. All right, this is a standard 8-pin IC. There's my thumb. All right, there's two drill bits that you normally use. They're number 61, which is the larger of the two, if that'll focus on there. And then the smallest is the number 70. It doesn't want to focus on that. There we go. That's a number 70. next to the number 61 so I mean these are very small drill bits um, all the IC's and resistor holes are the number 70 some of the bigger diodes will be the number 61 the relays will probably be the number 61 these are actually going to be bigger these are where wires go through probably um, eighth inch or a little bit probably three three sixty fours something like that something small sixteenth maybe just big enough for the wires to go through. So I'm going to get started on this. Well, there you go. <clears throat> All the holes are drilled. Uh, we can see the holes through this side. And then on this side, of course. I don't want to focus that close. So all the holes are drilled. I'm going to upload this now. And then um, when I start populating it and soldering it, I will pick up and do part two. So thanks for watching and tune in next week.